Welcome back to Mackie Tech, everyone. And don't you just love those times when you really need to get to a Windows computer, but you're beholden to your Mac or Linux machine? Well, today we're going to run through how to set up a Windows 11 virtual machine on a hypervisor called Proxmox. Uh, running Proxmox will allow you to access a Windows desktop from another computer like Linux or Mac, as you can see I'm doing right here. So strap in and we'll take a look at how that works. Stay tuned. Okay, so here we are in my Proxmox, uh, and I'm going to assume that you have all of your Proxmox storage pools configured because uh, we're going to be re referencing them for the respective ISO and VM storage. So uh, we'll make sure that we have those set up uh, before we begin. Uh, if you want me to do a video on how to set up all those pools and configuring Proxmox, let me know in the video comments and I'll be happy to add that to my growing list. So from here, we're going to make sure that we have the proper ISOs we need for the Windows 11 installation. And I will leave all the links in the video description. Uh, in my case, I have all my storage pools for ISOs under this hard drive right here. And I would just go ahead and click on ISO images and I have my Windows 11 and then I have a uh, virtual win ISO that we need for the Windows 11 drivers. So assuming we don't have anything in here, once you download them from the respective websites, you can come into your ISO images uh, pool here, click on upload, and then you would select the file in question and then you would click on upload here and then it'll upload the ISO into Proxmox so you can select it later when you need it. The other convenient thing is if you happen to have the URL from say a video description, you can click on download from URL from here, make that over here and then I click on paste and then I query it and this is the ISO that we want here. This is the virtual win ISO and it automatically populated it for us. And I can just click on download and it'll download it directly into the Proxmox ISO image storage pool, which is very handy. I don't know that I would try to do that with when the Windows 11 one, just because it asks you a bunch of questions about region and, and your language when you're looking for the ISO. So that might not uh, work too well, but if you get it to work, great, let me know. So to begin the deployment of the Windows 11 virtual machine, we're going to click on our first node here, up here. And as I mentioned before, I have a uh, instance already running that I'm going to just going to close it down just for the sake of freeing up some additional memory. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here so we can see the whole screen. And so we'll click on our node here and I'm going to go over to the far right up in the upper right hand corner and click on create VM. It's in blue. And our first option is our general and it's going to tell us our node again. If you have more than one node, you'll want to select the node that you want. And the virtual machine ID is going to populate to generally the next number that you have in your uh, in your virtual machines. And you can change that if you need to. I'm going to keep that at 109. And then for the name, I'm going to type in win 11 demo. And then we'll click on next. And then for the OS, it's asking us where is the ISO stored for Windows 11? Where do we have it? So for our storage, so we talked about storage pools before. We're going to select our hard drive and go to ISO image and we'll select Windows 11. Click on that and then we want to and then we want to go over to guest OS and then go under type. And from Linux, we're going to change this to Microsoft Windows. And then we're going to make sure that it's the most current version, which it is. And then I'm going to click on next. Now, before I continue, there is an option if you want to add the virtual drivers here and I've done that before uh, but it kind of goofed things up a little bit. I prefer to do it later so I have a little bit more control over what it does so I'm going to leave that unchecked and then I'm going to click on next 
and then under system a lot of this we can leave as default the graphics card is default we're going to leave the SCSI controller as a virtual SCSI single machine Q35 should be fine uh, the BIOS you know UEFI is fine we do want to have a EFI storage and that's just so we have enough storage for the uh, the firmware for the BIOS so I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to go down to um, one of my other local storage pools that I have and then we do want to have the QEMU agent for sure we do need to have TPM support because Microsoft has an ego <laughs> now we do want to have that and then for storage we're going to select the storage pool again that we want to select and version 2.0 is fine so then we're going to click on next and then for disks IDE bus type is fine and this again is the storage where do we want the VM to reside uh, I'm going to select my local storage here which is on SSD which is a little bit faster and I'm going to change the disk size to 100 gigabytes and we don't need any real cache you can if you want to I'm not going to do it for this demo I'm going to click on next so that brings us over to CPU now for CPU you can kind of go based on your setup you have in Proxmox how many different cores and or sockets if you happen to have two CPUs that you want to allocate I usually just do two for Windows it's usually fine for the type you want to make sure that you select the CPU that you're using for your Proxmox server mine happens to be an epic but if it's a Intel you want to make sure that you go down to the uh, x86 64 or uh, one of the other servers that are down here so I'm gonna click on epic and then click on next and then for the memory four gigabytes is the absolute minimum yeah I don't know how much you can do with it with four gigabytes maybe play solitaire but for us I'm gonna go at least 8196 maybe even higher just to start out with we can always change these later if we need to so we'll click on next and then for the network uh, you can leave these as default unless you have a specific virtual LAN that you've set up within Proxmox and then for the model I'm gonna go with pair of virtualize and but you might have to change this depending on your setup that you have um, you can come back in here and, and change it if, if need be and then click on next and then this is going to confirm everything that we did so make sure that everything looks correct and then we'll click on finish here is the the VM right here and it is in the process of being deployed so we'll wait for that and we'll be right back okay the virtual machine I think is ready so we'll go over to the win 11 demo make sure that's highlighted and then we're going to click on hardware and then under hardware we're going to go ahead and click on add and then we're going to go to CD slash DVD drive and bring that back up and we want to make sure it says IDE and it'll say one because the first IDE that we used was the hard drive for the actual operating system so we'll go down to storage and it's going to ask us the same thing as before where do we have the ISO for the virtual drivers so that's this one and then ISO image and we're going to select virtual win 0.1.271 ISO and then click on add and now we see that we have oh okay so I'm sorry the in this case the IDE for the drivers is one and the IDE for the Windows 11 is uh, IDE 2 that's fine uh, also uh, as an aside when you're under hardware here you can edit any one of these entries for your here's your RAM we set up here's the processor here's the BIOS display um, just make sure that your virtual machine is off when you do that okay so we're gonna make this full screen again and we're gonna turn the console on so we can see it after we start it uh, it's very important that you get your keyboard your virtual keyboard ready and I'll show you what I mean so we'll click on start here and then we'll click on council and go to no VNC and we want to bring this up rats I'm gonna miss it see it says failed to boot UENFI blah 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 so we missed our window but that's okay we'll go back to Proxmox and we're going to reboot 
All right, so any key to boot, and there we go. As long as you see this little circle down here like that, that means you're good to go. All right, so now I have a couple of tricks that I wanted to show. And the first one is we want to set this up so there is no bloatware. So under time and currency format, we're gonna go down to English world. Okay, and then click on next. And then for our keyboard, the US is fine. And we want to install Windows 11 and click on I agree. Click on next. And I don't have a product key right now that I'm gonna enter, so I'll click on that. And then we're gonna select our image, say Windows Pro. And we'll agree to their licensing. Okay, so now when you come up to select location to install Windows 11, we have the uh, hard drive right here. We want to load our drivers, which is the virtual ISO that we downloaded. So I'm gonna click on browse. And you wanna click on CD-ROM drive. Yours might be different from E, but make sure it says virtual dash windows dash 0.71, which is I think the current one. So I'm gonna click on this little here. And I'm gonna go all the way down to where it says a virtual SCSI and click on that. And then we're gonna go down to Windows 11, click on that. And then we wanna go ahead and click on AMD 64 and then click on okay. We also wanna unclick this. And then we're gonna get our Red Hat virtual SCSI pass-through controller, which is what we want. So we'll select that and then we'll select install. And then it's gonna ask us again. Yes, that's the dar drive we want and then click on install. It'll do its thing. Okay, so the first part of the installation seemed to have worked. So now it's asking us to connect to a network. So we're gonna go ahead and do a similar thing we did before by clicking on install driver. And we're gonna do the same thing we did before, except this time we're gonna go down to net KVM, Windows 11, and then AMD 64. And it found what it wanted. So it says network connected, which is what we want. So click on next. Okay, now it's asking us to name our device. We're just gonna say Win 11 Demo. Click on Next. A lot of just a moments and don't turn off your computer and updating and da 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 da. And we'll just say set up for personal use. And now we had a time where it is gonna, it's going to be downloading a bunch of updates. So we'll let this run. It usually takes a while and we'll be back later. Okay, so the installation is finally done. Uh, that takes about a good, probably 20, 25 minutes, maybe even a half hour for it to download all the updates and uh, get everything synced up. So uh, we're going to try to bypass the Microsoft account requirement. And we're gonna do a shift 10 and then O-O-B-E slash B A P S S N R O and that seems to have taken so we'll see if that works and we can bypass the account requirement this allows us to have a, a local account on the computer without having to sign in to a Microsoft account every single time and I'll leave uh, that in the description I wasn't sure if that was gonna work on the VM but it seems to have taken it Okay, so now it's asking us for a pin. Okay, so now Microsoft is asking all the different ways it wants to track us. I'm gonna say no, no, no diagnostic data. Click on next. Oh yeah, tailored experience, whatever. Okay, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna just say set up for the new PC. I had all my other Windows computers that are on my network pop up for options to restore from a backup, which is pretty cool. Okay, it's going to ask us to customize our experience. I'm going to skip this and skip this to sync our phone. And skip this and not now. It's going to ask us a whole mess of questions about setting up uh, M365. All right, and there is Windows 11. Uh, it is up and running. Everything seems to be working for the most part. I did end up having to put in my Microsoft account. It was rebooting a couple times. It was barking at me for it. I don't know if that was because of the region that I set up initially. It's something you can experiment with. I'm not guaranteed it'll work. But everything else is working. We have our internet. Let's make sure that that works. All right, well, the internet works. That's good. So that is it for installing Windows 11. 
So that is going to wrap it up today, folks. But before you go, do me a favor and make sure you are subscribed to Mackie Tech if you found this video helpful and make sure to give it a thumbs up to boost that algorithm. And let me know in the comments if you guys have ever used Windows 11 on a virtual machine or another version of Windows or if you use virtual machines with any regularity and what your favorite hypervisor is. If you happen to have a technical question about today's video and you'd like to support me, please consider stopping by my Patreon account and signing up for one of the membership support subscriptions. I do have all that linked in my video description. If you'd like to learn more about how virtual machines work, please make sure to give this uh, video here a look-see. And thank you again for watching. I really do appreciate all the engagement and we'll be talking to you again very soon.